If there was ever going to be a small car that would bring electrification to the masses, I think it could be this, the MG4. Good morning, welcome to Four Wheels in a Seat. I'm Alex Dalrymple and this is my channel where I can help you find a new car to buy because I test drive a different one each week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below, the notification bell, and if you enjoy the video, I'd love a like. Thank you so much. MG have already had great success with electric cars. Their ZS SUV is one of the best-selling EVs on the market, and now they're set to repeat that success with this small car, the MG4. And it's a good-looking car. It's certainly not ugly. It definitely catches a lot of eyes, especially in this shade of volcanic orange. Perhaps quirky might be the best word to use. The front of the MG4 is probably the angle where it looks most like a traditional petrol-powered car with its clamshell bonnet coming down to a low point here with the big MG badge. I really like these light clusters with the segment LED driving lights, indicators down here on the side uh, that are vertical and EVs still need a little bit of air to keep the batteries cool so those vents are down the bottom there. When I first saw this car, I thought it looked a little bit squashed or a bit unbalanced. And that's just because of this very sort of short rear end here. It looks like it's been compacted a little bit. But over this week, it has actually really grown on me. Now this car does ride up high for a hatchback. And I know that for a fact because it doesn't scrape on my very steep driveway. And it does mean you sit a little bit higher than most of the other traffic. To add to the distinctive look, we've got a black roof up here on top and this top spec Essence model gets 18 inch aero alloy wheels. But it's the back of the MG4 that gets the most attention. This is probably the most bold design MG have yet done, especially since most of their cars do look quite conservative by comparison. So we've got these twin spoilers up here on top. This really cool LED display here that uh, sits on top of the boot lip. Uh, the LED lights that stretch across to the middle here with the MG badge in the middle. I like this car's vanity plates just as a side note. And underneath the boot there's a 380 litre storage space which is not that big. You can extend that though by a further 800 litres with the rear seats down. No spare tyre but we do get a tyre repair kit. Powering the MG4 Essence is a single electric motor that drives its power to the rear wheels only and it outputs 150 kilowatts and 250 newton meters of torque, shooting this car to 100 kilometers per hour in a leisurely 7.2 seconds. If you're after something a bit quicker, then you can check out the top spec X-Power MG4. That will do it in just over three seconds. A full charge will get you 435 kilometers of range and charging to 80% takes around 28 minutes at a high speed charger. The interior of the MG4 certainly is minimalist, as a lot of dedicated EVs are. So minimal, in fact, that there's not even a power button here anywhere. The car just switches on as soon as it unlocks, and then once you get out and lock the door, uh, it shuts down then, which is a little bit disconcerting, especially if you're listening to a podcast or something like that. You've got to remember to hit pause before you get out of the car, otherwise it will just keep playing. Just like Tesla, there are very few physical buttons in here. Pretty much everything runs through the 10 inch center console screen. And it runs the same software as the MG ZS EV, which is pretty good, nice and clean, nice sharp graphics. It is a bit laggy though. You will often push a button and have to wait a couple of seconds for something to happen, or you'll hit a button and nothing will happen at all. But generally speaking, everything is pretty well laid out and easy to find. There is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you will need a USB cable to run them. There's native navigation as well. The sound system is actually pretty good, although it could do with just a little bit more bottom end. There's top-down 360 degree view for parking, but the view from the reversing cameras is very low resolution, which is a bit of a shame. Climate controls are also run through the center console screen and they're only accessible through this thin little strip of graphic at the top of the screen, which is actually kind of easy to miss when you're driving along a bumpy road. The controls themselves are fairly easy to use. There are also some physical shortcut buttons here underneath. Uh, you can adjust your volume for the sound system there as well. Moving down, wireless phone charging here, which is just a little bit too big for my phone to not be sliding around on. We've got the gear shifter here and a big part 
park button in the middle, park brake there. And then moving down, there's the 12 volt power outlet, a USB-A and USB-C port, a couple of cup holders, a little slidey garage door bin lid here, hiding a nice little convenient storage space, a little storage net here that does feel a little bit flimsy. Center console bin is just okay. Up in front of the driver is just a little bit too small digital instrument cluster. I would like it if it was just a bit bigger, but it does show you everything you need, your speed, the state of the battery, how much power is going back into the battery with regenerative braking, and also the radar display shows you uh, what vehicles are around you in case you can't see. The steering wheel I really like though. This is quite cool and feels a bit futuristic with its flat top and flat bottom. It feels really good when you're turning it into the corners. It's got a good weighted feel to it. A couple of um, joystick style controls here that uh, you have to kind of work out through a bit of trial and error exactly what it is they do, but I did manage to figure out that the one on the right here controls the sound system and the one on the left controls the display on the instrument cluster. Indicators are in the European configuration, so they're on the left-hand side, windscreen wiper controls on the right-hand side. The seats are a combination leather and fabric, and they're not uncomfortable, but they're not the greatest ones I've ever sat in. They're just okay. There is electric adjustment here, but nothing too fancy. Uh, the seating position is uh, just sort of at a Lowish point in the cabin, I suppose, but as I mentioned before, this car does ride up kind of a little bit higher than most hatchbacks anyway. In terms of being able to see out the front, I can't quite see the front of the bonnet and visibility all around actually, to be honest, really isn't all that great. The rear window is quite small and at a very steep angle, plus there are headrests there obscuring your view, so you will be reliant on the low res reversing camera whenever you're parking. View through the rear windows to check your blind spot is okay, but there is a massive blind spot there with the C pillar because it's quite thick. Materials in the cabin, um, soft materials up on top here. We've got some nice sort of metal accents. We've got a big slab of uh, piano black here, which has already got a few scratches, which is a bit of a shame because this car's only done two and a half thousand Ks. Okay, this is genuinely my first time sitting in the back seat of the MG4 and yeah a little bit small for me at 190 centimeters tall my knees are firmly into the driver's seat in front of me little storage pocket here on the back of the seat headroom's pretty good actually considering that uh, from the outside at least this car looks like it has a little bit of a sloping roof line but um, that doesn't seem to really affect headroom all that much the seats are quite comfortable I think three adults back here would be a little bit of a squash, but three kids would be fine, or two adults and one kid. In terms of backseat amenities, well, we've got a USB-A port in the middle there, and uh, well, that's kind of it. We don't even have a uh, armrest. But having said that, it's not uncomfortable back here. Nice view through the uh, privacy glass here. Keeps things a little bit cooler as well. So all our backseat passengers, I think will be okay on a uh, longish road trip in this car. On the road and the MG4 drives really well. It's very zippy, it doesn't feel dangerously fast and it drives in a very predictable manner. This car also doesn't have any artificial engine noise like a lot of EVs do. It uh, only has the gentle whine of the electric motor and a bit of road noise that does enter the cabin. But to be honest, I'm really not missing the artificial electric engine noise. Normally I kind of associate that noise with you know going faster and acceleration and we don't really have that here but I'm not missing it. One pedal driving mode is really good. It brings the car to a complete stop and it is actually possible to drive around corners and go up to intersections and drive around the suburbs normally without ever actually having to touch the brake. The great thing with electric cars, of course, is just that instant acceleration. And while this car isn't as fast as some performance EVs, it's still sufficiently quick to help you dart in and out of traffic and get out of other cars' way in a hurry. So I'm not sure whether it's this car's unique shape or the volcanic orange paint job, but it does get a fair amount of attention. I've noticed a lot of people giving sideway glances in traffic and on the side of the roads. It's certainly an eye-catching car. There are a few different drive modes, Snow, Eco, Sport, Normal and Custom. And within Custom, there are actually a few things you can adjust, including the amount of horsepower, not kilowatts, 
uh, the firmness of the steering as well as the amount of pedal force. So you can design your own drive mode. And there's a star shortcut button here on the steering wheel which allows you to change drive modes or else you can do it through the centre console screen. The safety systems in the MG4 aren't quite as obtrusive as they are in some other cars. The lane keep assist is fairly gentle as well as the forward collision alert. I haven't had that really go off at all, I don't think, maybe once. Uh, the adaptive cruise control works quite well and there are blind spot monitors in the rear vision mirrors. I would love to try the twin-engined full-on version of this car, the X-Power. It will do 0 to 100 in around about 3.8 seconds, which is insanely fast for a car that costs under $60,000. But it's always fascinating to see how technology has changed over time, and I've noticed that on Facebook just lately, where people have been posting old ads to motoring groups for the latest and greatest Aussie-made V8 that'll get to 100 k's per hour in six and a half seconds and set you back nearly $100,000. And now we have this small car that is absolutely packed full of technology, uses far less energy and gets to 100 k's per hour in half the time. So if you'd asked a car designer 25 years ago to draw a picture of what a small electric car might look like in the mid 2020s, they could well have drawn a picture of the MG4. It has that cool futuristic high tech kind of look. And you know, I don't think it's gonna be all that long before we see a whole fleet of cars that look like this on our roads. And with cars like the MG4, it looks like the future is actually gonna be affordable. 